of you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Keep going, keep going. Sing this with me. Welcome into this place. Come on, if you love him, welcome him. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. Come on. So we lift our hands. And we lift our hearts. And we lift our hearts. And we offer up this praise unto your name. Come on, I want to do this again. This is a shifting of an atmosphere. Come on, welcome. Welcome into this place. Welcome him into your vessels. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide. In the praises of your people, so we lift our hands as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. And so, Father, we thank you for this opportunity, oh God, for you to stretch us out this morning. God, we have not had a service here at Praise Center where we have not had all of our music instruments together. But God, this is a day of transformation to let you know, God, that we won't let anything stop us from blessing you and magnifying you, God. If we don't have a piano, God, we still can clap our hands and to glorify you and to offer unto you a sacrifice of praise because, God, you are so worthy, God. You're worthy of the glory, God. You're worthy of the honor, God. And the praises, oh God, of your people, God, is glorious in this place, God. As we lift our hands, as we lift our voice, as we lift our hearts to offer unto you a sacrifice of praise for we love you, God. You mean the world to us and there is no one else like you. So God, we thank you for God being faithful to come in and to inhabit the praises of your people. God, I feel a lifting, oh God, up right now in the name of Jesus. I feel a refreshing wind, God, blowing through this place right now, God, and it's because of your mercy, God. It's because of your favor, God. It's because of your love, oh God. And we say thank you, God, this day. And we thank you, God, for this opportunity to stand before your people. And so God, I declare that the words of my mouth and may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For, Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. So I put everything that's unlike you under subjection. I bind the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And I cancel his assignments, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And I cancel his decorations right now in the name of Jesus. And I cancel his actions right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I lose freedom. I lose healing. I lose worship. I lose, oh God, praise in this place in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So we can walk, oh God, under your anointing and walk in your power in this place in the name of Jesus. Send forth the healing, God. Send forth the deliverance, oh God. Let your mighty rushing winds run through this place, oh God, and sweep through this room, oh God, throughout the remainder of this service, oh God. That you may be glorified and that we may behold the beauty of our God and be able to inquire in this temple. And so bless us and keep us, oh God, is my prayer this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Turn with me quickly to Luke chapter 12. We'll be reading verses 42 through 48. I know that we generally don't acknowledge things that may be strange in the church, but I, th I just want to let you all know you all encourage me. 
uh, this morning as we sang or as we sung uh, uh, the praises of God this morning. It, it's easy to sing out loud when music is drowning out the off keys and, and all the other stuff that's going on. But when we have a desire to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, he comes in and he honors our commitment just to cry out to him. He doesn't care how it sounds. He just wants to know if you're doing it from the depths of your heart. He wants you to do it out of true worship for him. Not to be seen, not to get acknowledgement, not to do anything else, but just have a heart, as uh, Sister Kim told us last week. Just have a, a, a desire to get to the heart of God. And I believe that we had a desire to get to the heart of God this morning. And God will honor our commitment and God will honor our sacrifice of praise that we have offered unto him this morning. Luke chapter 12. We shall begin reading verses 42 through 48. And the Bible says in verse 42, and the Lord said, who then is this, is that faithful servant, faithful and wise steward? Let me go back. I want to go back one more verse uh, just so that I can include all of this in here. Verse 41, then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward? whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom this Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servant and maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Then in verse 48, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. And then my key verse for this topic of scripture or for this, uh, these verses of scripture this morning, for unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord on this morning. When I stand before you Sunday after Sunday here at Praise Center, I strive to do this. I strive to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Time is too short for us to uh, pity pat around and waste time and waste your time on uh, uh, man's opinions. But I am determined to give you exactly what thus saith the Lord and what the Lord has given me. And this morning, I want to use for a topic, for a subject this morning, weighty expectations weighty expectations. We have such, hmm, how am I going to do this? Because I, I, I know I wrote something down, but I, I, I have to give it to you the way the Lord has, uh, has given it to me this morning. But we, uh, uh, the people of God need to understand that God expects something out of us. The man of God told us a couple of weeks ago um, during our revival that God is looking for more out of us. And so God put this on my heart this morning to let you know that the expectation that he has for you, it may be weighty. It may be a lot. But I want you to know this morning that God did not leave you to be able to handle his expectations that he has for you on your own. And so there are weighty expectations that God has for us. God has a greater anointing. Um, as we have been uh, declaring all year long that God is looking for us to move forward. I've been trying to encourage you all to get past the things that have limited you from moving to the destiny that God has for you. And I'm not telling you that just because um, God, uh, uh, just because there is something greater in store for you. But I'm telling you that because God has more expectations or more that he expects out of you than what you have been given him the 
thus far. So for you to move forward means that God is not pleased with us just to be sitting in the same place, doing the same thing, talking the same stuff over and over again. But God is looking for us to do something new every single day. Why else would God tell us in the word, in his word, that he says, behold, I will do a new thing. He told them back in the Old Testament, he says, hey, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you see it? And oftentimes we can't see what God is trying to show us and we can't see what God expects out of us and we can't see where God is taking us because we're too weighed down by the expectations and the responsibility that God is looking for out of us. And so in our scripture text today, um, I, I, I can admit, I understand, I must admit today that living as a believer today is not an easy thing to do. I know it says that, you know, we got all the power and everything that we need, um, but if you can't apply the word of God to your life, you will find yourself as an ineffective, an inadequate, and an unfulfilled believer, and that believer is somebody just, just cannot do anything or cannot accomplish anything. And so I must admit that being a Christian today is not an easy task. And looking at our scripture text this morning, um, it, it shows us that the mission that God has for us is a great mission and it's a great charge. And it was so great that Peter had to ask the question that most of us ask God. God, are, are, are you talking to me? God, God is showing us that he wants us to go somewhere. He wants us to do somewhere. He wants us to witness to someone. He wants us to say something to someone. And before we do what God is trying to tell us to do, we'll ask that Peter, we'll ask that question that Peter said, Lord, are, are you talking to me? Are, are, is it me that you're talking to, God? Or do you want me to go here? Do you want me to do this? I can experience, I mean, I can, I can understand this completely. Because before we moved here from California, I kept asking God over and over again, God, are you talking to me? Are you, are you, are, are you really talking to me? You need me, this Southern California boy who loved um, that it never rained in California, who loved that it was 70 degrees all year round. Are you trying to tell me that you want me to go to a place, Lord, where it snows and it gets up into the high 90s uh, and then it's all ugly through all parts of the year? You want me to go from the beaches to the middle of the land where we got a big old nasty lake and rivers uh, that's not beautiful. God, are you, are you talking to me, Lord? Because God had a greater expectation for me and that he needed out of me. And where I was at, I couldn't fulfill his expectations. I couldn't fulfill the responsibility that God had ordained for my life. And so I began to become weighed down by the expectations that God had for me. And so I said, Peter said, Lord, speak as thou to us in this parable. And what God usually does is when we ask God a question that we already know the answer to, God often gives us a question back when he answers us. He don't give us the answer that we're looking for. You know, you, it can be easy for God to just say, yes, that's what I said. But God wants us to learn because too often we question God and his motives and we are not in the place and the point in time that God needs us to be. We question God, is that for me or God? Is this where you want me to go? And God has already given us the answer. So we find ourselves like Gideon. Gideon, uh, God needed Gideon to be about his business. But Gideon wanted to say, God, uh, could you show yourself and show this is really you uh, and, and make the one side of that cloth to be uh, wet and while all of the ground is dry. And then God did that and then uh, Gideon wasn't satisfied enough and he said, well God, is this really you? If this is really you, Lord, could you just do it and vice versa? God, instead of making the ground dry and the cloth wet, make the, 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 the ground wet and the cloth dry. And lo, lo and behold, God did just that. So God is not so awful or so mean to us that he won't answer our question but what he did for Peter is he answered a question with a question. And he said this, who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Jesus responded with a question and asked him, who else would I be talking to? Who else can I trust this world to? Who else can I trust uh, the sick and the lame to? Who else uh, can I trust the one who has been hurt and who, who has been harmed and who has been hindered uh, by the cares of this world? Who else uh, can I trust my prized possession to? Who else can be responsible for something that is so important to, for, to me? Who else can I trust in handling the, my business while I am not gone? If not you, then who can I trust? 
For many of us, responsibility is a very big word. God has given each and every one of us a responsibility, and he's given us an answer, opportunity to be, to be responsible. Usually what we do with our children is we give, um, uh, 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 we give responsibilities to the oldest, and, and depending on your age is the amount of responsibility that you are entrusted with. And so if you're the oldest, you're expected to be uh, the one who, who makes sure that everything in the house is running right when mom and dad is not at the house. And it doesn't matter your age, but if you're the oldest, you have that expectation. I, as as a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, had to um, uh, raise uh, my younger brother, who was eight years younger than me, Dean. So Dean was around me all the time. And so I had a responsibility, even at a young age, to make sure that he was fed, to make sure that he didn't get in no trouble, to make sure he wasn't in any danger. So responsibility, there's always an opportunity for you to show yourself responsible. God is not a respecter of a person that says, no, um, I don't want to give Crystal, or I don't want to give Missionary Howard a chance because I have somebody else there to be able to do the work. But he gives each and every one of us an opportunity to take the responsibility that he has for us and the expectation that he has for us and to be able to run for it. He calls all of us to have a chance to show ourselves worthy of being called a good steward and a faithful steward. How can you say that, Brother Peter, that God, that God gives us all a chance? Well, you all have heard of the, uh, the, the parable of the talents. Um, in Matthew chapter 25, uh, verses 14 through 30, and Matt, uh, in Luke chapter 19, verse is 12 through 28, it talks about the parable of um, the good steward. I mean, uh, of the talents, excuse me. It talks about the parable of the talents. And we know this parable by heart. He gave one five talents, he gave one two talents, and he gave one man one talent. He expected something out of every single one of them that he gave talents. He had three workers that were available, and he gave three workers uh, th the talents that they can handle. God won't give you anything that he has not already equipped you to be able to handle. So if he expects something out of you, he's already equipped you, he's already fulfilled you, and he already has an expected end for you in everything that God has placed on your pathway or in your walk and in your life. So we don't have to fear about anything that God gives us. And so when God gives us something, God expects something back from us. And so he left those young men with the talents. He left those servants with the talents. He gave them the five and gave them the two and gave them the one talent. And so when he returned, he went about his business. He trusted them to be able to use the talents that God had given them and to help them to grow. I told you all a couple of weeks ago, I don't know if it was in Bible study or doing the message, that God has given us talents to be able to edify the body of Christ. Your gifts and your talents and your skills is not just for you to sit on, but it's for you to be able to edify the body and to perfect the saints of God. That means whatever you gifted at, whatever God has given you, experience at and gifts at, he expects you to use it for the upkeep and the building of his kingdom. Everything that God has blessed you to be able to do, it should be suitable in the house of the Lord. When we do things in godliness, then those things that we do in carnality uh, won't be able to rise up. So some of us have skills and things that are carnal. I'm telling you today, if you got skills that are rolling dice, God can't use your dice in the church. Those things are carnal. Those things are not good things. I understand that you may know how to flip and slide and swing around on poles, but those things don't work in the church. Those things are not good. It may give you a good grip to be able to hold on and not give up hope, but we must use our talents, our God-given talents to be a blessing in the house of the Lord. And so he give, gave one five talents. And lo and behold, that man came back, that, excuse me, that servant came back with five talents. He doubled his talents because he understood that what God had given him was something important important and that he just could not sit on it and we got to get into our mind that what God has blessed me with is too important for me to hold on and keep to myself God has healed me from sickness and disease that's too important for God for me to hold on and not share that gift with somebody else God has made ways out of no way then God did that that's too important for me to keep to myself and not share it with anybody else if God has opened up doors that were shut before me I'm telling you all 
God, when I first came out here, I put my foot forward and trusted God. And God opened up door after open up door and after other door. He just kept on doing great things for me. And if God is doing great things for us, how can we hold on to those things when there's somebody out there that don't know that God still delivers? When there's somebody out there that doesn't know that God still heals? When there's somebody out there that does not know that God still makes a way? And so we got to be about our Father's business. We got to do what God has called us to do, and we can't become uh, overwhelmed by weighty expectations. And so this man with two talents, a servant with two talents, he turned around and he uh, gained two more talents because he understood that what God had given him, the Lord had given him, was something important to the Lord that gave it to him. But that one wicked, they called him a wicked servant. He only uh, was given one talent. And, and so uh, uh, it, he, he didn't have much great expectations. There was a great expectation, a weighty expectation for the one that had five. Because to much is given, much is required. And so he was given much because God looked to get much out of him. He already knew what he was going to get out of that man with five talents. He knew what he was going to give out of that man with two talents. And he knew what he was going to get out of that man with one talent, but he gave him an opportunity to show himself worthy of what God had for him. He showed himself he wanted God, he, God wanted him to see whether he can be trusted with the little things because the Bible tells us that little becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. The man with five talents didn't just start off with five talents, but he showed himself to be faithful. He showed himself to be obedient. He showed himself to be somebody that be willing to follow God's instructions and to be about his father's business and so we as believers God has blessed us with too much stuff and so sometimes weighty expectations can overwhelm us they can consume us and they can destroy some individuals but I need you to know that even though something that God has placed in your heart seems like it may be too hard for you to bear, uh, even though things may seem like the responsibility is way outside of your scope, it's awesome to know that we don't have to rely upon our own might and our own strength. But God says that it's not by your power, it's not by your might, but it's by his spirit. That means that everything that God brings my way, he's not, he's already equipped me because he's given me his spirit. I heard you all talking about that this morning in Sunday school, that the whole Holy Spirit is what helps me to walk right. He's the one that helps me to talk right. He's the one that helps me to live right. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind so that when things come my way, when challenges come my way, when obstacles come my way, when expectations come my way, I don't have to worry about doing it in my own might because in my own might, I'm going to fail. I'm going to run short. I'm going to give up. I'm going to hide somewhere uh, because I can't do it on my own. But it's by the power of God working in me that I'm able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I can't help but to continue to stress to you all and express to you all that we are the light of the world. Brother Preacher, what you're saying? That the, in our scripture text today, he says, who then is this faithful steward that I will give over the world to? God has placed us into a point that God has placed the world in our area of responsibility. Wherever you are at, God has given you responsibility to nurture that land. He's given you the responsibility to breathe life into that land. He's given you the responsibility to be able to tend to the land because he needs you to handle that while he is gone. On. We are many members of one body, but not all members have the same office. Each of us have a responsibility to be able to make sure that the body is working in tip top shape. So whether you live in Dumfries, God has given you that area to be nurture, nurture the land and to bless that land. Whether you live in Woodbridge or whether you live in Atlanta or whether you live in Memphis, wherever you live at, God has given you the authority to cultivate the land and to nurture the land. Well, how can you say that, brother pastor? Well, in the beginning, God made the heaven and earth and after he made Adam and Eve or Adam and the woman he gave them dominion over the land even though they sinned and they fell short of God's glory God gave them a great responsibility um, Adam had the responsibility of uh, naming every single animal that God brought to him Adam had the responsibility of tending to the garden and that was a great responsibility how do you keep all these different animals in order how do you keep things in decency 
in order. It wasn't that Adam was strong. It wasn't that Adam had all the answers. It was because he had God's spirit with him. Because you remember it says the spirit of the voice of the Lord walk in the garden. So he had fellowship with him. And so he was able to do that great responsibility by the power of God that was working in him. And so we must understand that God has given us a great charge. And in this last and evil day, we must be careful that we must that we should keep the light on. We have to keep the light on in this dark and dreary world. The Bible tells us that ye are the light of the world. A city that's set upon a hill cannot be hid. And so with everything that's going on, I'm here to tell you that it's easy uh, to become distracted. Uh, the things that we see on TV today, it's easy to become distracted. The things that are uh, running around on the internet today, uh, it's easy to become distracted. The things that we see in newsprints today, it's easy to get off the mission of being the light of the world. Uh, everything that, uh, 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 it's amazing that everything that comes on TV today or it comes in the newsprint or jumps on the internet, it's all about sex. Uh, the car commercial, it has a half-naked woman in there. What the woman got to do with the car, I don't know, but for some reason she's a part of the advertising. Even a golf commercial. There was a golf commercial with a naked golfer. How does nudity have any anything to do with buying golf clubs or golf balls. That's what the world is trying to do, is trying to throw things into your life that causes you to become distracted. It's easy to become distracted if you focus too much on the world. I want you to know this morning, it's easy also to become frustrated today. Because there's so much craziness going on. How is it that a young, a, a man can uh, break down in the middle of the street and instead of people coming to uh, his aid and rescue, they came to uh, with guns blazing to be able to challenge him and confront him. It's easy today to become frustrated by what we see and what we hear in the world today. Missionary Howard, I know you've been praying. I don't know if the issue has been resolved. But it's easy to become frustrated when a whole island loses power for three, four days. It doesn't make sense. How is it that you don't know what you're doing? So the things of the world can easily cause us to become frustrated and anger. Uh, it's also easy uh, for us to isolate ourselves with so much wickedness going on and so much evil going on. Sometimes it seems like I just want to sit myself in a corner. I don't want to go out. I, if I'm just by myself, then I don't have to worry about being distracted. I don't have to worry about being frustrated. I don't have to worry about being discouraged. Uh, but God didn't give us the spirit of fear. He didn't give us the spirit of timidity. He didn't give us the spirit of confusion. He gave us the spirit of love and a power and of a sound mind. So if I put my trust in him, he told us that uh, he'll keep us in perfect peace if I can just keep my mind stayed on him. And so we must know that life is going to come with trials and tribulations. For Jesus told the disciples, uh, the disciples that these things have I spoken unto you that you might have peace. And so I'm here to tell you today, God has great responsibilities for you. You must be able to be the ruler over his household. This, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has established it upon the seas and founded it upon the flood. This is the Lord's earth. This is the Lord's world and he expects his believers to be tending to his garden. But we're going to have some tribulations. We shall have some trials and tribulations but we can have perfect peace because he's already overcome the world for us. And so what the devil does is he uses these strange tactics um, and, and, and things to, to get us distracted and to get us off of our responsibilities and to cast all of our cares upon somebody else instead of casting them upon the Lord today. And so I'm telling you today, don't be overcome by weighty expectations. God has given you much. And because God has given you much, he expects much out of you. How dare we stand in the house of the Lord and be pumped in prime. Come on, you ought to give God glory. God has done too much for you. Uh, God has blessed you uh, uh, tremendously. We shouldn't have to pump and prime you to magnify the God of our salvation. We should just be able to simply say, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for the Lord has been good and his mercy endures forever. We, we should just be able to get call signs and say, uh, oh I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continuously be in my mouth. We shouldn't have to be pumped and primed, but we should be ready to give God gratitude. We should be ready to give God glory. We should be ready to give God an offer unto him, a sacrifice
place of praise because the least that I can do is offer God a true worship. The least I can do is to give God gratitude. The least I can do is trust God that he's able to do anything but fail. The least that I can do is give God what he's so worthy of. God has given us so much. He's given us the responsibility to tend to the land. But we see the land and the land is ugly. We see that the land is, uh, is, is out of order. We see that the land is sick and it needs some help. But, uh, but God has commanded us, the people, to tend to the land. We live in, in a spiritually wicked land today. But the Bible tells us this, and he, and he has an expectation on us to be the lights to this world, to be the, the, the bomb that this world needs, to be the ones that will tell them of the goodness of Jesus and to let them know that Jesus still saves. Because, because he said this, he says, if my people, which have been called by my my name will humble themselves and pray. He called us to pray and to seek his face and to turn from our wicked ways. Then he says, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sins and I will heal the land. And our land is spiritually wicked. Our land is sick today. And he needs the land. We need the land to be healed. So that means we must get about our father's business and begin to pray. We need to seek his face. We need to turn from our wicked ways so that he can heal the land. Who can God trust with the healing of the land? He can't trust anybody but those that are close to him those that are willing to seek his face those that are willing to turn it says in in psalm 24 who shall ascend into the hills of the lord who, let me get it straight let me get it straight psalm 24 it says this how can we get into the presence of the Lord? How can we get into the area, the atmosphere of God? It says in uh, Psalm 24, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Meaning what you need, God is already ready to equip you and to give it to you. You just have to trust God and understand that he's able to do everything that he does he said he would do and, 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 and you'll never come short of his glory um Aaron in our lesson today we understood that God never fails that God is a keeper of his everlasting covenant that means that when God said it I can believe it I don't have to uh, do anything about it just believe it and walk and run with it so we as believers have to understand that God has given us a great responsibility to be able to tend to the land and it's not by our power and it's not by our might but it's by our spirit by his spirit said the Lord you're able to do it don't become overwhelmed with expectations um, that God has placed on you the world will place stuff on you and great expectations but you only have to fulfill what God has given you to do yes you expected to have integrity in the world but God gives you the strength and ability to have integrity so everything that the world should expect uh, should come short or come uh, subject to what God expects out of you yes you may be expected to be at work when you uh, may be sick but God knows your body and you should know your body and so you don't have to let the world dictate what you're supposed to do but you should allow God to dictate or direct what you should be doing and God has called us to be lights God has called us to be cities that set upon a hill God has called us to uh, do what God has called us to do and, and then I have it broken down here as I come to my conclusion uh, as a pastor Write this down. This is what God expects out of me. First Peter 5, 1 and 3. He tells me in First Peter uh, 5 and 3 that he expects the pastor to feed the flock. That's my job is to feed the flock, to tell you what thus said the Lord, to tell you that God expects something more out of you, that the little bit that you've been doing, God is looking for more. He didn't just give you a talent just to sit on a talent, but God is giving you the talent to bless the ministry and not only to bless the ministry, but to bless your home and not only to bless your home, but to bless you on your job and not only to bless you on your job but what he has given you is something to be able to bless the nation today so he's given me the word to feed the flock and not to lord over the people but to be an example of the people I'm not here to tell you and ridicule you but I'm here to let you know that God still loves you I'm here to let you know that God still believes in you I'm here to let you know that though you may not uh, have been able to do everything that God has given you I'm here to tell you that you still got time that as long as you're breathing God is still able to do 
exceeding abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think according to the power that works in you. As long as you say yes to God's will and yes to God's way, God is saying I'm able to work in you because your belief uh, helps empower uh, um, uh, 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 your faith helps empower uh, me to be able to do great things for you. So the more we believe God, the greater God think God, the greater things God can do for each and every single one of us. So I'm here as a pastor to feed you and to not lord over you and to be an example over you. Uh, but then the flock, write this down, the flock uh, has been given um, direction to obey and to submit. In Hebrews 13 and 17 it says, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself because they watch for your souls. And so obedience is better than sacrifice uh, because when I put flesh under subjection then I know that I'm submitting to those that have rule over me. And when I'm submitting then that means God can jump in and use me however he needs to use me. God if you need to use me I'm willing to go. That's a sign of submission. That's a, and I understand that submission is not a word that everybody wants to uh, submit to but it's a word. And not only do you got to submit, I have to submit. It's not something that we can just that we're the higher power. I have to submit to Bishop Thomas. And Bishop Thomas has to submit to Bishop Blake. And Bishop Blake has to directly submit to the Lord. There is a hierarchy in this church. And when any of us get out of order, then we mess up the hierarchy. We mess up what God expects out of us. We mess up what God is looking for us. Uh, and, and so we have to obey. And we have to submit. And not only that as a flock and a body, but then us as believers. The Bible tells us that uh, in Matthew 28 and 19, we have the responsibility to go. And not only do we have the responsibility to go, but we're expected to teach and to baptize. And so if we're not going, if we're not teaching, if we're not baptizing, then that means we're not doing what God has commanded us to do. And then he also gives the believers this responsibility. I told you earlier, he says uh, in 1 Chronicles 7 and 14, he says, humble yourselves, pray and seek his face and turn from your wicked ways. And then healing comes about in the land. Deliverance comes about in the land because we're obeying and doing what God has given us responsibility to do. And then last but not least in Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 through 48 he tells us that we should love those that hate us. The Bible, the, the, you know, the world would tell you to hate those that hate you and love those that love you. But God gives us something absolutely different because he expects something more out of us. The world don't expect nothing out of you but wickedness and evil because that's the only thing that the world breeds. But what God breeds, he breeds about love. He breeds about kindness. He breeds about meekness uh, because that's a part of the fruit of his spirit. And he expects his spirit to be uh, uh, manifested outside of us. It's not enough just to say I'm filled with the spirit and not show no fruit. You're a tree that needs to be cut down if you're not bearing the fruit that God expects out of you. And so God expects greatness out of us. And though God expects great things out of us, I'm here to let you know that you don't have to worry about failing. You don't have to worry about falling short of God's glory uh, because God has given you power. He's given you might. He's given you strength. And God has not just placed these instructions, these responsibilities on you just today. But these responsibilities that God has placed on us since the beginning of time. And he promised us in his word, he says, I will never leave you, leave you, nor ever forsake you. Meaning that God has had your back since he shaped you in your mother's womb. He told you, I knew you before I even shaped you in your mother's womb and ordained you to be somebody special. For Isaiah, it was to be a prophet. But for somebody else, it could have been a missionary. For somebody else, it could have been an evangelist. Somebody else, it could have been the gift of administration. For some Somebody else, it could have been the gift of help. Whatever your gift is, God had already ordained you and equipped you to be able to handle and fulfill the responsibility that God has given you. I want to encourage you all today. Don't become overwhelmed with expectations that God has for you. He put onto this man, told Peter, he says, I, who else can I leave in charge of the people? Who else can I leave responsible for the things that I love in this world. I understand that the world has turned their backs on me. I understand that the world has turned away from me. I understand that the world has, is leaning to their own understanding. 
But even when they turn their backs on me, I still love them. I still need I still need to get to them. I still need to let them know that I still love them and I still care. I need someone that will be willing to show Christ to them, to show Jesus to them, and you are my vessel. Woe to the servant that's not doing my business. Woe to the servant that's not taking care of his responsibility. Woe to the servant that, that is not doing what I called him to do because in mistreating those that are under his responsibility. We got to be careful. You know how we do, how they do today. And I'm ending now. Uh, it's amazing how uh, they have little cameras now today that they can set up uh, for babysitters. They have, what is it called? Big brother. They have big brother watching. Nanny cams. And, and, and have them watching. Uh, God don't need to place a nanny cam in your closet. He don't need to place a nanny cam in your car. He don't need to place a nanny cam on your job. But God is everywhere you are at already. And he sees and he's looking at everything that you are doing. And he wants you to know that he sees you and that he's there to help you if you're willing to cast all of your cares upon him and to call on him in your time of need. He's willing to help you and to bring you through so that you won't be overcome with weighty expectations and that you can fulfill the responsibilities that God has placed on your plate. Are you responsible? That's a question I have on my sheet today. Are you responsible? Are you fulfilling the responsibility that God has placed on you? Are you walking worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called? Those are one of my, that's my favorite scripture. I want to walk worthy. I don't want to become overburdened or cast down because of what God is expecting out of me. I, and the preacher told us a couple of weeks ago, he says the least that we can do is live holy and acceptable. But what God is expecting more out of us, yes, living holy and acceptable seems like it can be so hard to be able to do. But that is just the least that we can give to God is a holy body, a holy temple, an acceptable temple that he can come in and dwell in. And if we allow ourselves to be holy and acceptable, then we can get all the equipment. We can get all the strength that we need to be successful to handle every responsibility, to be able to overcome every single hardship and every single trial and every single tribulation that comes our way because God will be with us. Come on, resting on your feet this morning. Weighty expectations. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. And our scripture text this morning Christ challenges Peter. He challenges him and asks him, who can I trust over my flock? Later on, he would go and ask Peter, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Asked him several times over and over again because he wanted to remind Peter of his responsibility after he left. God has given us a responsibility. He has given us a charge, each and every single one of us, to feed his sheep, to tend to his lambs, to tend to his property while he is going away. Are you about your father's business today? Are you doing what God has commanded you to do? Are you putting your talents and your gifts to good use today? Or are they just wasting away? And God is coming upon you and Christ is coming upon you and he is seeing that there is no fruit in you. That you're not bearing anything that can be useful to him or to anyone else that passes by today. Don't find yourself to be uh, overweighed or overwhelmed by what God expects out of you. But you can do this. You can press towards that mark. You can press towards the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God is expecting, has a greater expectation out of you. He wants more out of you. Come on, tell yourself, God wants more out of me. Come on, God wants more out of me. And you can only answer what God wants more from you. He, you only can answer that question. You, oh, you're the only person that can answer what is God looking out of you. I, I, I only can encourage you today that God is looking for more. And he doesn't want you to become overweighed or burdened down or fearful of what he expects to get out of you. But he has made you a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. He has invested so much into each and every one of us that he, it, he should have a great expectation out of us. And so I want to encourage you all today. 
don't become overwhelmed by what God is looking for you to do. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He says his yoke is easy and his burden is light, meaning what he's giving you charge over is not going to it's not going to kill you because everything that he's begun, he's able to complete it. So if he's if he started something in you, he's able to not only complete it, but he's able to fulfill it and bring it all to pass and to make you come out stronger, to make you come out more wiser, to make you come out with a greater anointing and better equipped to be able to handle the next responsibility that God has waiting for you. God expects more out of you, and I want to encourage you to give him the more that he's looking for. Father, I've given you what thus said the Lord on this morning. I've given these, the word to your people, uh, the, 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 the message about weighty expectations. Thank you, God, that you are a strong tower, that we can run to you and we can find safety in you, that there is nothing too hard for you, but that you can handle everything that you, that we bring towards you and that you can handle everything that you bring towards our way as well. Help us to stand in this last and evil day in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us not to become distracted and help us not to become discouraged. Help us to not become dismayed, oh God, by the cares and the foolishness of this world. But God, help us to keep our eyes and our focus stayed on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to continue to rely upon you and to put our trust in you. Oh God, knowing that you're able to do anything but fail. Oh God, but you're able to complete the work in us, God. You're able to bring us through, Lord, in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. The weapon is just there to try to keep our eyes and our hearts focused in on you. Let us not become weary in well-doing, God. Our due season is coming in the name of Jesus. Let us not be weary, oh God, in well-doing, because in due season we shall reap if we faint not, God. Put your word into us. It's your word that's a lamp unto our feet. It's your word that's a light unto our pathways. It's your word that will help us to stand when all around us may be sinking sand. Help us to stand today. Lead us and guide us and strengthen us. Anoint us and empower us, God, and bless us to be able to fulfill what you need us to do. You've commanded us to go. You've commanded us to share the good news. You've commanded us to tell someone about you. Our things that we can do is just to tell about our testimony, how you made a way for me, how you opened doors for me. That's what I can do to go out and share with someone about the great things that you're doing in my life. Bless us, oh God, this day. Let this word fall on good soil, oh God, and let it come back, oh God, in our remembrance as we press towards you and we do your work and fulfill your responsibilities that you have for us on this day. We thank you even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise in the house of the Lord this morning. Okay. You tell me don't? Okay. Okay. Is there anyone need prayer before we continue in the furthest of this service? Been cast down and found yourself fearful and giving up hope because of what God has placed upon your heart. Before I continue in the presence of the service, I just want to touch and agree with you. If I need to touch and agree with you, you to let you know that you're able to do it. That you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That you don't have to rely upon your own self, but you can rely upon the strength that God has given you to do exceeding great things for him. I've done what the Lord has told me to do. Come on, Lady McCall. She wants to come and say something to everyone. So be seated in the house of the Lord.